what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so if you didn't watch the previous two videos i recently picked up an 83 jeep cj7 uh so right now i'm actually about to move the uh daytona out of the driveway so i can take the cj7 off of the back of the u-haul trailer so i can return the trailer and i'm going to back the jeep into the garage and uh, we'll do a quick walk around we'll talk about what the jeep needs what's not done to it things i want to fix and you know we'll go from there one of the first things you're going to notice is that the jeep is extremely loud and that is because it is open headers right now so the exhaust isn't finished i want to do a custom exhaust on it from the headers back and if you think that challenger is loud which it is this jeep is pretty loud right now so Moving this thing around early in the mornings is going to be a no-go for a little while because all the neighbors are going to hear it. So even if some neighbors are sleeping right now, I mean, about noon, uh, yeah, they're about to wake up. <laughs> so anyways, let me move this truck out of here, right? That way. Static. That way I can uh, get the Jeep in the garage. Drive, buddy. All right. And if you're wondering, this is why I haven't been able to lower the truck just yet. I've just been really, really busy uh, coordinating to get this uh, CJ7 here, uh, working on the Challenger, uh, trying to get that ready. Uh, so the truck being my daily driver, it's usually not like the top priority to uh, customize or, you know, get a lot of work done on it. Because again, it is my daily driver. So she's kind of like, I just fresh the shit out of her with that bush. So she's kind of like my little bastard child right now. She's my baby. She's my baby. In case you can tell, I'm still really delirious from our 24 hour trip in the power. So, anyways, let me keep on keeping on, get this Jeep off the trailer. Oh, man. since I drove a carbureted stick shift vehicle, but we got it. All right, let me get this trailer out of the way. Get this bad boy in my garage. So I returned the U-Haul trailer, moved the Challenger out of the way so we can get a really good look at the uh, CJ7 here. So one of the first things we're gonna talk about is the color, of course, because that seems to be everybody's, like the big thing that pops out to them is the color. So the color is a Mopar color. 
It is solar yellow. Uh, my older brother's got a neon SRT4 painted in solar yellow. And originally we did paint the Jeep solar yellow, but it looked like almost any other yellow Jeep. So at the time, this is maybe a year, maybe two years ago, it was really popular to do this right here, which is that like Rhino liner, right? It seemed to be really popular. And as we got discussing what the Jeep was gonna be used for, uh, we're gonna take this thing trail riding, right? Uh, just like the Challenger, I like to use it. I'm gonna use the Jeep. So it was really popular at the time and we decided to go ahead and do the Raptor liner, the tensible Raptor liner. You can see it right there, Raptor lined in the solar yellow. Now what's really cool is that the solar yellow paint mixed in with the Raptor liner gave it this really cool matte or satin uh, yellow look. It's got a little bit of a gloss, but it's not a high gloss and it's not exactly matte, but that's one of the first things that people love uh, when they see the Jeep is the color. They always ask what color it is. It is a Mopar color, solar yellow inside Raptor liner, the tintable Raptor liner. Moving on to the next most popular question is of course, suspension, wheels, and tire setup. So the suspension is a rough country, four inch lift. Again, it still has the leaf springs in the rear, as you can see. It's a small suspension lift, nothing too crazy. We're not quite gonna go mud bogging or anything like that in it yet. Um, so we want to give it a lift, give it that tougher look. So of course we want to get some nice wheels and tires. So the wheels, they are chrome. They are the Krager Nomad 2s and they're wrapped in the uh, Milestar Patagonias in 35s. Front and rear. And of course, to complete the look, how to get a full-sized spare. Full-size spare. And the same thing, Krager Nomad 2 with the uh, Milestar Patagonia 35 in the rear. Full-size spare. Now, moving into some other things that, if you're not a Jeep person, you might not notice this right away, but the body that came with this Jeep originally was, it was no good. It was rusted. Uh, the floorboards, floorboards were completely gone. So you can see these are nice and intact. So the floorboards were completely gone. So we opted to get a deep YJ body. And that's this body right here. So it's a YJ body with the CJ7, uh, you know, fenders, hood, front clip. So even though it is a YJ body with a CJ front end, uh, we still have the CJ uh, roll bar, we got the CJ tailgate, and the uh, TJ doors on the YJ body. So no, it's not all direct bolt-on. You have to modify the strikers to get these doors to work like this. And the second thing is there's no uh, rubber seal because if the rubber seal is there, these doors won't close all the way. So in the future, I'm gonna keep hunting and find some actual CJ7 doors. Uh, there's small fitment issues. You can see the gaps right here. It goes wider and then it gets tighter, but you can make them fit. Uh, same thing with the tailgate. Uh, it had to be modified to fit on the YJ body. Moving on to the Jeep's interior, uh, of course, it's got the, I think these are like a mid back uh, or low back uh, seat. Uh, I might get some high backs because I am six foot two. I'm a little taller, uh, but these are still pretty comfortable. Uh, I'm not really upset with these. I like them. And so far we don't have a carpet in the inside and we don't have a center console. We do have the original CJ center console that's going to go uh, back in here, but we do want to add a radio. We've got some speakers already mounted up, but when you start driving with the top down, the wind is going to take all of your audio so we're gonna get uh, they sell a center console that the radio and an amplifier fit and it has cup holders because as you can see there's no cup holders so over here we've got some gauges you've got your oil pressure voltmeter got your gas gauge coolant temperature and of course your mileage completely at zero because it has not been driven and your speedometer so all of these buttons, all of this is brand new, right? You got your fans, got the temperature for the fans, you got the froster, uh, wipers and washer, and the uh, steering column is all OE. Coming in from the driver's side here, got all three pedals, got your seat adjuster. Uh, so the steering wheel that we wanna change is we wanna go to the 
uh, Jeep Laredo steering wheel. It is really cool looking. I'll show it to you guys. It's got the leather wrapped. It's got like these rivets around the horn right here. It looks really cool. Uh, definitely gonna go for that. Uh, this is the original dash that we had. And as you can see, it's cracked right here. That's uh, a very common thing with the CJs, especially because most of the time you're driving them with, you know, the top down. So gonna go ahead and get this uh, dash pad replaced. It's not too expensive. And while I'm at it, there's some carpet that they make that is resistant to uh, water and moisture and stuff like that. So I do plan on replacing the carpet as well to complete the interior look. I don't plan on putting rear seats in it just yet. I kind of like how it's like a little pickup truck. Uh, we can put the dogs back here. We can put a cooler back here. So when we go on our, uh, you know, trail riding adventures, we can have a cooler. We can even pack a little camping grill and uh, cook our food. So for the most part, that is the exterior of the Jeep. Now, let's pop the hood because I know a lot of people are going to be wondering, like, are we going to give a little Toronto racing treatment? I got a Hemi over there. Let me get over here real quick. I've got a Hemi lying around back here. Um, but no, uh, I'm going to keep it the uh, inline six. It is a completely rebuilt motor. Uh, the only thing that we did different was it has a header on there and it goes to a dual exhaust versus the single exhaust. And there is no exhaust on it. As you guys know, when I cranked it up, it's really loud. So I am going to have to get an exhaust done up on it. I'm still debating on keeping it original CJ7 or if I'm going to go ahead and maybe get a custom exhaust, some stainless steel pipes and mufflers. I'm not quite sure yet. So Anyways, let me pop this hood. All right, guys, pop the hood open. You can see all the hardware for that hood louver. And going into here, you see we've got the battery. You've got the OE style jack, which is, is look at that, that's so cool. Over here, you got your brake booster, your carburetor, your intake manifold, and of course the header we spoke about. Everything under here is brand new. I mean, the alternator, the belts, uh, the fan, everything. You can see even the the reservoir right here. Reservoirs are looking nice and uh, shiny and new. So little stuff like this, I'm gonna take my time and uh, wipe it down to keep it clean as possible until we go uh, trail riding. But everything here is nice and clean. You can tell it's never been driven. One thing I'm gonna do a little different is add some firewall plates for the heater hoses and a little bit of this wiring right here to clean it up just a bit. Again, add a little bit of flavor, nothing crazy. So that's the motor in line six. Let's look at what's underneath. All right, so you guys saw how shiny and clean the motor was. Interior is nice and clean, uh, very straightforward. So let's go underneath. You can see the suspension, rough country. Go under here, you've got the transmission. You got the skid plate right here. Again, transmission rebuilt. Everything's nice and new, nothing's dirty. Uh, see if you can see all the brake lines and brake hoses, everything in the bottom of the Jeep. It's completely spotless. Got a couple spots right here that I could touch up with some undercoating. Same over there. Uh, but the Jeep hasn't really gone far. It's gone from driveway maneuvers. As you guys saw, it doesn't even have a mile on it. But everything, nice and clean. You can see the brake drums in the rear, painted yellow to match. I'm gonna move on over here to the front. The caliper is yellow, your brake lines, everything, everything is ready. So I did mention before it does have a rear main leak. You can see right here. So that's the only thing that we have to uh, fix. So we got to drop the oil pan, go ahead and get in there, knock out the old rear main and put in the new rear main. Should be a, should be a day's job. As you can see right here, going back to our headers. We, it went from a single uh, single outlet uh, exhaust with a stock manifold to its true dual now. So with the dual exhaust, we're gonna have to fabricate or create uh, an exhaust system so we can have dual exit out the rear and make this thing sound nice. Well guys, there you have it. That is the Jeep CJ7, the 83 CJ7, Toronto Racing Special, uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I'm really excited to ride this thing uh, because out of all the things I own, it's completely different. You've got the autocross track inspired challenger. I got my street truck build going and now I finally have something four wheel drive. So before the only thing I owned four wheel drive was my Ram 2500. It was a third gen as well. 
I had it jacked up on 35s. Uh, and it was kind of cool knowing that you can pretty much drive over anything. Uh, but with the Jeep, you get that extra freedom, right? And the Ram, you can only roll down the windows and that's about it. But with the Jeep, you can take the top off. And with the CJs, what's super cool, if you guys don't know this, is you can fold the front windshield down and it just gives you like this pure feeling of freedom. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm like most excited about is just being able to be out on some trails, open air, uh, four by four, it's got lockers in the front. There's nothing to worry about when you're in this Jeep. So we do have some work to do. I got a lot of little things to fix before she's roadworthy and ready to go on some cruises and some uh, you know, trail riding. One of the other things I gotta do is a complete nut and bolt check, right? Because just like we do nut and bolt checks on the Challenger before race day, uh, this thing hasn't even seen a mile of street driving. So we have to go through and make sure every single bolt is tightened down before we take it on a long road trip. So I'm gonna get started on that in between working on these two, these two children right here, they always fight for my attention. I have to do something on the truck, something breaks on the Challenger, do something on the Challenger, something breaks on the truck, they just go back and forth. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm really excited to get the Jeep running. Uh, Ashley's excited, go down to the beach, do some trail riding. If you guys are excited, let me know. Let me know what you think of the 83 CJ7 and let me know what you wanna see, what kind of content you wanna see us uh, do with this Jeep. And of course, leave a comment below. If you like these videos, hit that like button. If you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, peace out.